Hey, what's up, everyone? Checking out Yephora 5.1 for the Nexus 6. This ROM was just recently updated, I believe, on Sunday, March 15th. So this is a pretty current, up-to-date build. Now, this is, in fact, a beta, I think, but it is functional. It is pretty stable. I've been running it all day, and I haven't had any issues. So this is, in fact, running Android version 5.1. This is Euphora version 1.1 beta 0.1. Build date, Sunday, March 15th. You got your uh, timestamp. You got LMY470 as your build number, which is up-to-date. And it is, in fact, running a lean kernel. Now, I don't know if this is a modified lean kernel or just the base lean kernel, but it is running a lean kernel. And lean kernel is pretty great. Now, you do have OTA update processes here. I don't know if that works or not, but you do have a download where you can go straight to a download page. You got change logs. You can get the Google Apps package. And you can get to Google Plus and XDA source links to talk or discuss any issues or bugs you come across. Or if you just want to check up and see what's working and what's not working in the current version. So great stuff in the about uh, section. Now this thing is loaded with features in the settings. Now last time I reviewed this, it was a little bit more simplified, um, but everything is spread out through the settings menu. Not that I mind, but uh, just be prepared. This thing is going to have a lot of features. So starting off with the sounds, you are going to have some pretty nice stuff in here. You can link the ringtone and notification volumes if you want to have those together. Another thing I'll mention real quickly is you do have a quick toggle just to get into your devices right there where you can touch and adjust your sound notifications or what have you. And then you can get into your basic priority modes as well. Still have your toggles for vibrate. Everything is standard, but you can get the advanced adjustments as well. You have the other sounds menu, uh, menu where you can adjust and disable some certain things you don't want to have enabled. Also worth mentioning is down here at the bottom in vibrate section, you have a vibrator intensity. So you can adjust the intensity of that vibrator. So if you don't like it being so um, rough or hard, uh, you can adjust those values and make it a little bit softer on the on the uh, actual haptic or the feedback or whatever. Now you do have display and lights and in here you are going to find the LED notifications. They're not going to blink or pulsate. They're just going to be solid states. But you can adjust it with the battery. You can adjust these values. You can turn it off. You also have regular notification lights that you can adjust. Now you can use custom values and you can adjust those. You can add apps. Once you enable this, you can add specific apps or utilities or what have you. You can use live display and this is basically going to change your color temperature. So you can go in here and check them out. You have your regular day, your night, which is kind of ugly. You have outdoor, which makes your screen super bright. Uh, you have automatic modes and you have off. So you can adjust your color temperatures and get that to where you want your saturation or what have you. Uh, you have a reset button as well, I noticed. Or you can disable that. You also have color calibration. I wouldn't recommend doing this by eye, but you have it in there. It's integrated. Ambient display, you have some advanced features. You can overwrite the defaults and set longer visible durations. So you can go anywhere from one second to five seconds. The default is three. And you can choose to make that fade out quicker or a little bit longer if you want. You've got double tap to wake, double tap to sleep, double tap on status bar, and double tap on screen to awake. Uh, you have your screen recorder built in. That's pretty cool. Up to 720p. You can change the bit rate up to 20 megabits and you can record from the microphone or not if you want. You can change your animations and you can change basically your toast system and list view animations. So a lot of customization right there with your animations. That's pretty sweet. You have expanded desktop with this ROM. That's a pretty standard feature with most ROMs in particular. You have your LCD or uh, pixel density or DPI you can change. A notification manager, you can come in here and adjust your heads up notifications. If, this something, if something that bothers you, you can disable this completely or you can add uh, specific blacklisted apps that you don't want to be notified within or you can adjust your timeout based on never two to 10 seconds. In the lock screen, you can enable a standard pattern lock or pin code, your typical stuff. Uh, you do have a long press lock icon to sleep. So if you're in the lock screen and you long press that lock icon, it will put your screen back to sleep a little bit quicker. You can put an equalizer on your lock screen. So if you're listening to music, it will put a cool little equalizer down there. So I'll show you that real quick. So, I held the breath inside my lungs for days. so that's pretty cool. And uh, just real quickly, I'll check that long press. So that just puts it to sleep a little bit quicker. So you can enable or disable that navigation bar if you use LMT or Pi controls. You also have a left-handed mode. So if you are in landscape here, you can change it over to the left if you are a little more prone to the left hand. You have your button layouts. So you can actually change the button layouts. You can add more pages or you can modify the icons and all that stuff in here. You can restore if you make any mistakes. Go back to the defaults. You also have dimensions. You can change 
the dimensions so you can make it smaller or larger if you're going to use a nav bar. Super great stuff, both in the portrait and landscape modes, mind you. Uh, you have navigation rings, so you can set up navigation rings. So besides just the Google Now, you can set up two specific applications or actions right here on the side if you want to customize that. You can also disable it, but if you disable it, be aware you wouldn't, you're not going to get your Google Now anymore. You have your power menu, and you can adjust your actual features in here. So if you long press that power button, you get your advanced reboots and all of that built in based on your preferences. So great stuff. Not a lot of ROMs actually have that. You can use the power button to end calls if you want to, but I don't recommend that because you might accidentally hang up on somebody in most cases. You have playback control, so long pressing the volume rockers up or down will seek tracks. You have reorient the volume button, so if you go into landscape mode, it will basically invert the power buttons. This should pretty much be standard on Android. You have your themes, with basic CM theme manager. System profiles, if you want to set up any specific toggles based on your location, you can go and get those. You can also access your system profiles within the power menu button. So that's great if you enable that feature. Status bar, you can adjust your clock. You can center it, put it on the right, left. You got full customization with this ROM. You can add AMs, PMs. You can put the, what day it is if you want to based on lower or uppercase. You can change the format. I believe you can even do a custom format. They have a lot of different options you can choose from. You can also display weather. Now, one thing I do want to note is I had an issue where the weather would force close. So yeah, I don't know if weather is working right now in the 5.1 beta version. So be aware of that. Not a big deal. I don't use weather, but it's not working. So just so you are aware. Now, network traffic, you can display the outgoing, incoming uh, network traffic. You can customize that to anything you want. You can change up your battery style. You can change it to icon portrait or landscape, circle text, or hide it all together, and you can place the battery percentage within it or next to the side. You can turn on your um, carrier label if you want, so you can see your carrier. I don't know why you would want to do that, but you can if you want. Notification counts and tickers, super user indicator, and brightness control, and your weather. But like I mentioned, the weather is buggy and not working. It force closes. So that's not very useful at the moment. Notification drawer, you can completely customize your notification drawer and the status bar. You will have quick pull downs where you can put that on the right or left. You can also disable it if you're not a fan of that for whatever reason. You can also use auto close panel. So if you enable something, it will automatically close right away. Uh, that's a cool feature if you use it. You have vibrate on touch where if you touch something, you'll get feedback, have tech feedback. Uh, disable on lock screen, which means you won't be able to access it if you accidentally wake the device when it's in your pocket or whatever, or you just don't want to access it or have other people being able to access it if you have a lock or a pin code. Now you can adjust the configuration of your tiles. You can move these all around and you can add more features. There's plenty here to choose from. Unfortunately, I did notice that there are no advanced quick toggles on Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, but they do have GPS advanced modes why they have that and not Wi-Fi. It's a little bit backwards <laughs> where if you go on stock Android, you will have the complete opposite. You do have a timeout that you can put on here, screen timeout. You can adjust that as well in an advanced detailed viewed mode. So unfortunately, you can't get in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth advanced mode menus with Euphora. But you have all your basic complete customization. You can enable three or four uh, tiles per row and you can enable the highlighted tiles if you want just two on the top. You do have privacy where you can enable the privacy guard. You can turn this on so each application you install in the GPS Google Play Store will automatically turn the feature on. You can disable the notification if you want or if you want to see which uh, current application is being blacklisted or you know guarded, it will display it up in the status bar. And you can go in here and set the values manually if you want. So privacy guard is featured as well as blacklisted phone numbers you are going to have the option to turn off that search bar in your recents. So if you want to turn that off, you can come in here and turn that off and you can adjust that clear all button. So you can turn that on or off and you can put it pretty much anywhere you want to, top or bottom, anywhere you want. So that's great stuff. You can also clear all tasks except for the foreground task or you can disable that. Everything else is pretty standard. You do have performance. So if you use a lean kernel, you can adjust your processor or CPU frequencies. You can set the values on boot, so next time you boot, it will contain or retain everything you set. You have your I.O. scheduler that you can also set on boot and change up if you want. Standard developer options, you can come in here and make sure you have advanced reboot enabled. I think it's off by default as I just showed you, but that will give you all of your advanced reboot settings. 
You can also enable quicker animations. I recommend it so you get snappier animations a little bit quicker through the menus and what have you. And you can adjust this on a percentage value, which is awesome. So you can go all the way down to 0.1 in speed if you want that. Otherwise, that pretty much sums it up. This is Euphora 5.1. It is currently in beta.1.1, beta 0.1, but it's pretty damn stable. I haven't had any issues. Anyway, guys, if you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as I have more ROM reviews on the way as well as products and probably more phones in the future. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video.